There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Let's get going. Yeah. Wasting too much time already. We've turned this place into a courtroom long enough. Barman, give me a drink. Coming right up. Hey, Barman, pour me one too while you're at it. Court is back in session. Put that bottle away, Earl. You heard the judge. No drinking while the circuit court's here. Everybody sit down. In the case of Joe Caswell, will the defendant stand? He means you. Stand up. I heard him, Sheriff. You don't talk until the judge tells you to. Now then, Joe Caswell, in the shooting of George Bamber's son, Will, you carry a Colt 45, same as the hole in Will Bamber's back. And there was an empty shell in your gun. He was spoiling for a fight. You're a dirty liar. My boy wasn't even armed. If he hadn't have called me out, he'd still be breathing, and I'd be halfway to Cheyenne. Hear that, Judge? Sit down, George. But he admits it. Quiet. This trial is over. Now, seeing as how there were no eyewitnesses, I can't say who started it and who deserved what. But there's no way this is self-defense. And it's not the first time you've been in circuit court. I've seen you too many times, Caswell. Fighting, thieving, drunk and disorderly. Running horses off somebody's spread. And most of the time, folks end up dead. Too many times, mister. You've had your chance and then some. Well, this is the end of the trail. Do you have anything to say before I pass sentence? I never back down from any man, no matter who he is. Joe Caswell, I hereby find you guilty of murder and sentence you to death by hanging. Such sentence to be carried out at sunup tomorrow. May God have mercy on your soul. Courts adjourned till next month. This way, Caswell. Then I guess I'll just see you in hell, Judge. We'll have a drink on it, you and me. Drink? Yep, I'm mighty thirsty myself. I was here first. No, you weren't. Take your turn, boys. Everybody gets served. Now, who's next? Prelude to a commonplace of somewhat grim, unsocial event known as a necktie party. The year is 1880, the guest of dishonor a cowboy named Joe Caswell, now just a few hours away from a date with a rope. He's headed for a short dance, to be performed several feet off the ground, before moving on to the dark eternity that awaits evil men. Mr. Joe Caswell, who, when the good Lord passed out a conscience, a heart, and a regard for others, must have gone off for a beer and missed his. Mr. Joe Caswell, whose time is about to run out in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Execution, starring Don Johnson with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Uh, this will do right here. Is that tree hold him, Sheriff? Uh, sure it will. It ain't that much. Give me the rope, boys. Right here. Throw it over the top branch. Yeah, hold his horse steady. I made the knot real good. Yeah, he did. It's a big one, too. You did fine, boys. 
Lo, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Reverend. Shut up, Caswell. I shall fear no evil. No need, Reverend. I ain't interested in any prayers. And your immortal soul. Are you interested in that? It's my immortal neck I'm concerned about now. It's your pleasure to see that it gets stretched a couple of feet. And since that book of yours ain't gonna stop it from happening, I'd as leave make this short and get it over with. Go ahead, then. I'm finished. Judge? You got any last words, Caswell? What would you like to hear? It's up to you. Then I'd like to say something about the young man I put a hole in. Yes? He had too much mouth and not enough brains. Why, you... And I'd invite him out again this morning if I had to do it all over again. You shot my son in the back, Caswell. Which is a long country mile from an invitation to a showdown. If that's all you got to say, I got this to add. I'd like it to take a while. I'd like you to feel it, Caswell. The more you kick, the more justice I figure there is in the world. <laughs> I'll do a jig for you, Papa. Just like a puppet. With my hands tied behind my back. How's that? Now, can we get it over with? All right, put the noose around his neck. All set. Smoke, Caswell? Why bother? I wouldn't get to finish it anyway. All right, then. That's it. By the authority vested in me... Hurry up! I'll tell you this, Caswell. I've been a judge for 35 years. And the one question that always rests heavy in my gut is whether any human being has the right to condemn another. Maybe this is what should come from God. But in your case, in your case, Caswell, you're an evil man, plain and simple. You're a disease. When we hang you, it's a service to humanity. I have no doubt. No doubt at all. Gentlemen, do your job. Go ahead, you heard him. Hold! Go on, horse. What in the... Where's... Where'd he go? He was here, and then, just like that, he... Oh, my dear God. I tied the rope around his neck. It was tight, I swear. I know you did. I, I saw it. Then... Then where is he? That's a good question. What... What happened to him? What? Stay down. Who are you? Just try to relax. You're going to be all right. Where, where am I? <laughs> a long way from home, old friend. A very long way. I ain't outdoors no more. No, you sure aren't. My name's Dr. Mannion. You're in my lab in New York. How'd I get here? That, I'm afraid, will take some explaining. Is it day or night? Oh, <laughs> that hardly matters. The truth is, it's more than a full century after your last moment of consciousness. But how? By this, an invention of mine. I wasn't sure it would work, but now <laughs> I have the proof. I gotta get out of here. I suggest you stay where you are. You're in no condition to go anywhere just yet. Can I get you anything? A, a drink of water. What's that contraption? A time machine. Pretty big for a clock. I wouldn't expect you to understand. 
What's happened involves principles of physics you know nothing about. A few minutes ago, you were inside this machine. Where's my horse? Well, it's just large enough for a man. It brought you here from where you were. You mean Montana Territory? Yes. Yes, I, I suppose that's right. I'd have to check the coordinates. But you have a most distinguished future. You're the first time traveler in the history of man. I'm going to introduce you to a new world, and you're going to tell me all about the old one firsthand. Now, let's loosen your collar and see about that drink of water. Continuation of the previous entry. I offered the subject food and water, especially the latter. He seems quite parched. His clothing appears to be authentic in every detail, including the leather chaps and cowboy boots. After several attempts at conversation, he appeared desperately tired, and I showed him to the bed in my inner office. But I managed to learn the following. His name is Joseph Caswell. He claims to be a trail boss on a cattle ranch in the territory of Montana. His last moment of consciousness was on November 14th, 1888. He says he was on his horse when he suddenly blacked out. He awoke to find himself on the cot in my laboratory after I'd carried him out of the machine. He claimed to remember no other sensations, and he has no real grasp of what has occurred. There's one disturbing point. The marks of a rope are etched deeply into his neck. He offers no explanation for this. And I have one other observation, hardly scientific. I don't like his looks. I don't like the face or the eyes or the expression. The overall appearance is disquieting, even disturbing. I can't escape the feeling that I've taken a 19th century primitive and transported him to a modern day jungle. Heaven help whoever gets in his way. That's all for now. Who are you talking to? <laughs> no one. Don't lie, I heard you. This small device is called a digital recorder. I speak into it, and it records my voice. A way to make notes, you might say, without pen and paper. Yeah? Here, I'll show you. There's one disturbing point. The marks of a rope are etched deeply into his neck. He offers no explanation for this. See? That's my voice, stored in the machine. Ain't that some? What else you got in here? You should rest. Huh? Oh, yeah. Bed's might soft, though. Yeah, it would be better if you don't touch anything. Sure, Doc. I smelt smoke. Spare some tobacco? What? Oh, of course. <sighs> Look at that. Fire right out of the air. Just a cigarette lighter. <laughs> it's not magic, I assure you. Look. On. Off. On. Off. Huh? 
Mighty slick. Here, take it. Go on. What else? I thought you were tired. Yeah, plenty of time to sleep, plenty. I want to take a look at the world out there, see things like you showed me in those picture books. Carriages without horses and buildings that go up in the sky. Oh, they're out there, Caswell. Things you've never seen before. Then let's get to it. No hurry. It'll all take some getting used to. Things you can't imagine. I'm ready. All right. What are you doing? Just pulling the cord on the drapes so you can get a better view. Huh? Ta-da! Now, look out the window. What is that? New York City. Just as I told you. Make the... make the noise stop. Here, settle down. Must be quite a shock for you. Where'd all those lights come from? That is what night looks like now, in the big city. But not everything's changed. Like what? Ideas, Caswell. Concepts like right and wrong. I know about that. Do you? I had a deputy sheriff in Dodge City try to beat the difference into me with a wet rope. I know all about right and wrong. And what about justice, Caswell? What about that? I'm supposed to know about justice? More than most men, probably. Right and wrong, they could try to beat into you. But justice? Those marks came at the end of a rope, didn't they? Don't you worry about my neck. That's where you were when I reached back in time. You were at the end of a rope, weren't you? Six or eight feet off the ground, and I got to you in that one fraction of a second before your neck was broken. When you're dangling at the end of a rope, it don't matter whether you're one foot off the ground or 100. You're just hanging there. Seems like it ain't ever gonna end. You were hanged because you killed someone, weren't you? A whole territory full of them. I stopped counting after 20. 20 men? Yeah. They all had it coming. In that case, I'm going to have to send you back. Back? To where you belong, to the very same moment if I can. And that'll be justice, huh? I died once already, mister. I've been to hell. You try it sometime. Try getting your head put in a noose. And when they run the horse out from under you and that rope pulls you up and you hang there with your feet kicking and your, and your hands tied behind your back and the pain, then you tell me about justice. And the victims you killed, Caswell, those 20 men... They died with no pain? You're just talking words now. Victims and justice and right and wrong. Well, they sound good in a nice warm room on a full stomach. They sound nice and they go down easy. But you try them on a nice cold mesa, where another man's bread and another man's jacket are all that's left between you and staying alive. Or try them in a dirty town where you gotta walk backwards from morning till night because ten men got a target picked out between your shoulder blades. And for every one of them, there's a whole lot more with the same idea. No, you get in that machine and go back to where I was. And then you talk about your law and your order and your justice. The words will sound plenty different. That may be. But I've made my decision. I'm sending you back. Oh, you are, huh? I know your kind. Clean-faced Johnny-come-lately dandies who'd ride around in trains, rolling nice and easy over the graves of men like me. Stand back. You think I'm scared of a little gun like that? I had me a Colt 45 with a whole lot of notches on the grip. Get in that machine now. You don't tell me what to do. I hate your kind. I'm warning you. Yeah? Well, I'll do more than that. I'll take that pop gun clean away from you, because you don't have the guts to use it. Don't you ever draw on me. 
Well, that's what I think of your note-taking machine. Uh, you stay down. If you know what's good for you. I'm gonna go out and get some of that northern hospitality. Paper! Evening paper! Hey, cab! I need a cab! Get your brakes here! Hot pretzels! <sighs> Too much noise. Look at that guy! Who does he think he is? Hey, man. Nice costume. Get out of my way! Who are you, a drugstore cowboy? Hey, move it, pal. Look at his eyes. What's wrong with him? Another crazy. I gotta get away. Are you still there? Honey, we can talk it over, can't we, honey? Don't you hang up on me. Don't you dare, you rat. Let me in. Let me in. I'm making a call. Do you mind? Get out. Take your hands off me. Right now. Okay, okay, I'm going. What are you, nuts? I can't think. With all that... With all that noise. What happened? That man, he threw me out of the phone booth. He looks dangerous. I'm calling the cops. Stop it. Stop it! There was an overtime on your call. Please deposit 25 cents. Who's talking to me? Who's talking to me? Where are you? Shut up! Shut up! Let me out! Hey, that guy wrecked the phone booth! That's vandalism! Grab him! Not me! Somebody get the police! Out of my way! Another draft over here. Coming right up. Hey there, cowboy. You from the village people? <laughs> hey, what'll it be, pal? Make it stop. Something wrong? Too much noise. Too much noise. You mean the music? Whoa, now. Hey, what are you doing? Put the gun away. I said, make it stop. <laughs> Something tells me we better get going. Excuse me, Artie. We need some fresh air. Yeah, that's it. Gonna be an expensive evening, pal. What? That'll cost, you know. Plenty. It was too loud. Hey, look, buddy. I, I don't want any trouble. But if you don't pay for it, I'm gonna have to. It's worth a bundle, too, so... Whatever cash you got on you, you know, a credit card. No checks, though. Give me a drink. Hey, easy, pal. Right now. Sure, sure. You want the bottle? Here you go. Something wrong? No, nothing, pal. Not a thing. Good. With that gun sitting there, you could tell me it was high noon on the 4th of July, and we were fishing for whales off a canoe, and I'd say you was right as rain. How's the whiskey? I can give you the good stuff if you want. What is that thing? That... Thing? In the corner. Where'd the music come from? Well, uh, it's a jukebox. Just a plain old jukebox. You been in stir, buddy? 
Stir? Up the river. What river? The big house. Jail? Yeah, I've been in jail lots of times. Matter of fact. But I got out. You sure did. This last time, though. I'm trying to remember. Well, you take your time now. There's no pressure. Matter of fact, why don't you just mosey on out? Have yourself a nice hot bath. You got baths? Not here, but, but you can get one almost anywhere. Try the Carlton Arms. Rooms don't cost much. I just need sleep. That's what I need. There you go. Some quiet and some shut-eye. Sure, I understand. It's crazy out there. That it is. All those... those things running around. Which things is that now? With the wheels, the carriages with no horses. You mean cars? They make all that noise worse than a herd of cattle. There's too many of them nowadays, that's for sure. It's like... like thunder all the time and, and lights everywhere you look going on and off and... Well, that's life in a big city. You know what you ought to do. Move out of Manhattan. Go on upstate in the country where you can get some peace. Yeah. Catch a train. Like to do that myself one of these days. Where's the station? Well, you can go out of Penn or Grand Central. Uh, but first, take my advice. Get some sack time. Have yourself a good night's sleep. Things will look better in the morning. I already tried that. Take a bottle with you. On the house. Take two. It'll help you sleep. Go on now. Carry these home and... What's that? Where? On the wall. Just a flat screen TV. You know what that is, don't you? Looks like a window. Yeah. That's what it is. A window. You can see whatever you like. Take your pick. Got all kinds of channels. Here, here, I'll give you a demonstration. What do you want to watch? You like this show? Well, it's okay by me. I'll, I'll turn it up for you. Not too loud. All right, hombre. I'm giving you a chance to draw. You better make your move. Missed. What'd you do that for? He drew first. All right, cowboy, that's it. You gotta pay me for the TV, too. Police! Police! Stop that man! He's got a gun! Hey, get out of the street! But aren't you drunk? Keep away! Did you see that? That guy shot the taxi cab. Wait, here comes the mounted police. He'll stop him. You! Hold it right there! He's going to the park, officer! I said halt! Leave me be! Hold up! Put your hands in the air! I was just trying to get him! You're not going anywhere! Hands where I can see him! This is Hendricks! I need backup! Central Park West! You the sheriff? That's right, partner! Spread him! You ain't taking me in! Your hands behind your back. Not this time. Put your hands behind your back. Put it away. Stop. Don't resist the rest. Easy, horse. This place is worse than Montana territory. Let's go. Get up. Evening, sir. Evening. I'll get the door for you. Uh, thanks. Uh, sir? Yeah. Are you a tenant? Me? I haven't seen you before. I just have to drop something off. Which floor? What? Most of the offices are closed now. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know that. Except for Dr. Mannion. Right. He likes to work late. Stays all night sometimes. Mannion? Yeah, th yeah, that's it. I have to drop something off for Dr. Mannion. He's still here? Maybe. 
Maybe not. What does that mean? Never can tell. He could have gone down the back stairs. Worth a try. How's that? I say I'll, uh, I'll see if he's still here. Third floor. You can't miss it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, worth a try, all right. Didn't even lock his door. Come on, come on, where's the cash box? Maybe in the back office. Gotta be a wall safe somewhere. What in the... Ah, oh, jeez. Somebody else had the same idea. This guy's been beat up good. If he dies, I ain't gonna take the rap for this. Doc. Hey, Doc. Doc. Doc, wake up. You gotta help me. I can't make it here. Just move away from the body, cowboy. Who are you? Me? Who are you? Buffalo Bill? Help me lift him up so we can bring him around. Forget it. Ah, he's all right. We just had a little scuffle is all. Well, he's stone cold now. Doc, hey, Doc. I told you, forget it. What are you doing here? I thought the place was empty. What do you want? Same thing as you. I'm gonna help myself to whatever I can. But it looks like you got here before me. With the place being dark, I figured I'd be all alone. You checked the desk, did you? Get out! My, my, what big muscles you have. I'm shivering in my boots. Get out, I said. Not so fast. What's that? What's it look like? You'd pull on me? If I feel like it. What are you gonna do about it? Well, how about this? <laughs> I'm waiting. What you got there? Cat pistol? No more shells. Now, as I was saying, I don't expect to keep so much cash in here, but he must have a safe. You know where it is? I asked you a question, cowboy. So, what's, what's all this on the wall? Some kind of electrical stuff. He's a doctor. Oh yeah? That means he's rolling, Endo. I told you to get out. All right, you asked for it. Missed. Shouldn't draw a gun unless you know how to use it. I don't need a gun. I got my bare hands. Sure, cowboy. Once I choke the life out of ya. How do you like this? Window cord around your neck. Feel good? Huh? Huh? Can't fight if you can't breathe. In your times. Just about run out. Sweet dreams, cowboy. Now, get my gun. Go down the back stairs. Wait a minute. Didn't see that. What's in there? Some kind of secret chamber. Maybe that's where he keeps his dough. Hey. Hey. Open the door. Open the door.
Hold it. He's back. What? How? That's not him. No, it's not. Then who? Cut him down. Hurry up, cut him down. I got it, Sheriff. Help him. Yes, sir. Here, use my knife. Let him down easy. It don't matter now, his neck's broke. But that ain't Joe Caswell. No, sir. Sure ain't the man we hanged. Man, who is it? Look at his clothes. What kind of clothes are they? I don't know. Some kind of city get up. Fancy shoes and all. Then who is he? It's not Caswell, Reverend. It's a stranger. Someone I've never seen before. Me neither. I put the noose around his neck myself. Around Caswell's neck? I, I don't know who this is. What kind of devil's work is this? I don't know if it is the devil's work. Did we hang an innocent man then? I hope not. I pray to God not. Amen. Put the, put the body across one of the horses, Will. Take him back to town for now. Yes, sir. This is November 14th, in the year of our Lord, 1880, the aftermath of a Montana necktie party. The victim's name? Paul Johnson, a minor league criminal from the city of New York and the taker of another human life. No comment on his peculiar death save this. Justice can span years, and there's no statute of limitations on retribution. It can happen in an instant or across centuries, which is really the same thing in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Execution, starring Don Johnson with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling, based on a story by George Clayton Johnson. Heard in the cast were Joby Cerny, Terry Berner, David Darlow, Norm Waddell, Richard Hensel, Rick Arthur, Rick Peoples, Brandon Ells, Oksana Fedanushin, DJ Howard, Sarah Court, Carl Amari, and Karen Anglin. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Matt Sorrow, Tim Cerny, and Todd Beyer. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking.